Hi there, me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So, sorry, Wordy Wednesday is one day late, so it's now like an unwordy on Wednesday, um, or whatever. Reason being, I ended up going to a PTSD support group last night. Um, I'm not going to mention anything about it because it's what happens in a group, stays in a group. Um, went with a friend of mine. That's all I'm going to say. I had a really good time. It was it was difficult to hear other people's stories, per se. And I'll, in a couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to do a thing about going to groups because I've been in a couple. Some groups are kind of eh, some groups are different, so... We'll talk about, like, what can I expect in group therapy? But that's not today's video. That'll be, that's what they call a teaser. So, we're going to discuss Unwordy Wednesday. What happens when the aphasia kicks in and wants to steal your words? Well, people try to be helpful. And in some cases, they honestly think they're being helpful. But they're not. Because, well, we'll discuss it. So, why is it important that we... Both those of us with the aphasias, or the anomia, or even apraxia of speech, or verbal, verbal apraxia, understand kind of what we expect, and why we expect it, of those of us around, those around us, be it a, a support person, be it a spouse, be it a child, be it a whoever, right? Because eventually, your apraxia, your, your anomia, your aphasia, any combination they're in, is going to show up, and it's going to make conversations difficult. It's going to make life frustrating. Certain things will be now become a, a, a struggle. And there's not, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you. The fact that you have the ability to, in and of yourself, turn a five-minute conversation into a three-hour affair, that, that, that's not that's a thing, right? And the people around you, be that at work, be that um, in a social group you belong to, be that at home, be that, you know, uh, with your friends, Unless you, they're like my friends, then, you know, it's abuse. Uh, we'll get into that later. So, it's just, it's important to understand the fact is it's something you can't change. So, you can't really get upset about something you can't change. Now, the good news is, and this is some good news, um, of the vast majority, and I, I'm not going to give a number because I honestly don't know. Um, I saw a couple different numbers and they were drastically different. Uh, more than four and a half percent. So I'm like, eh, I don't have time to read all those studies. The vast majority of those that have aphasia within the first two years of their stroke, generally it starts to dissipate by year two and three, right? Now, is there a population that will be always uh, in companionship with? A com yes. Yes. You, you may possibly have a constant companion, that being one of your communication deficits. And there's nothing you can do about that, right? Your brain is damaged. As much as someone wants to tell you they can fix it, you can't fix damaged organs, right? Otherwise, skin burns wouldn't happen because the skin is your largest organ. So we're going to deal specifically with aphasia, but some of the core concepts are the same for anomia or apraxia. Speech and language, right? That's what is the essence of your communication. Speech, the language that you speak. If you took someone who didn't speak, oh, German, and we plop them in the middle of Germany, they might fare okay because, you know, a lot of Germans can speak English. Now, let's take that same person that can't speak English or German and plop them in Japan. Do they speak Japanese? Plop them in a certain part of Japan where they have very little experience or um, influence from people that are outside. So, depending where you are, you may have difficulties with language simply because you're traveling. Well, think about this. With aphasia, you get to be traveling all the time, but you get to really go nowhere. So, the first part is speech, right? Are you able to actually understand either in either direction? Am I able to understand the words I'm using going out and I'm understand the words I'm coming in? So, I understand what you're saying and I understand what I'm saying. I'm not deaf. I'm not drunk. I'm not... Um, you know, slow, intellectually handicapped, but okay, you kind of got me there, maybe. Um, you under, I, I, When I was in the hospital, when I was in the back of the ambulance, I heard the radio traffic. I'm C-TAS 2, they're requesting a neuro-redirect for a stroke bypass, and I'm like, that's me. I'm screwed. This is going to go bad. Like, this could go bad, bad. I'm done. Um, so I understood everything they were saying, I just couldn't spit it out. 
ignore that part. Um, but what if you're receptive, right? People are doing the this and all you hear is, right? That's another story. So I might be able to understand the message I'm getting out, but I don't understand the message that's coming in. So both have their, their frustrations. Now, language means, you know, the actual words being used and making the words and the word combinations, the word combinations into phrases, the phrases into sentences, and the sentences into a train of thought. So speech is, do you have the physical mechanical ability to make sounds? Right? And you understand the sounds that are being made. Language is the nuance of using the sounds, right? So, for example, every so often, everyone in a normal day-to-day -day conversation will say, instead of, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee, I'm going to get a copy, a coffee of cup, right? Everyone can say that, you know, it's, it's a possibility. But what if you constantly are saying, I want to of coffee cup, right? You're, you're jumbling the words. That's where you get into the use of language. Or are you just making non-existent sounds? You're making up words, right? So that's kind of where that comes from. So let's just talk about the three steps to dealing with aphasia. The first one's getting the message in, the second one's getting the message out, and the last one is verifying the message. The first step for all three is you wanna make sure the person can hear and understand you. Because if you're trying to have a conversation with a person that's essentially deaf, yeah, good luck. Go ahead, try it. I'll give you time, but go, go try it. it it's not gonna work. So the first step in all of those instances, getting the message in, getting the message out, verifying the message, is make sure the person can A, understand you, and B, they can hear you, right? So, or first maybe hear you, then understand you. So, if they can't do either of those, because I could understand what they were saying in the hospital. There was a lot of charades at times and pointing and, you know, but we'll get into that. So, first off with getting the message in, they want to make sure that you know what's being said. So, I'm just going to grab a prop that happens to be on my table. This is a blue highlighter of some description, right? I'm going to ask you, do you know what this is? And you're going to go, for people to do this, okay, maybe they've never seen one before. Maybe they don't know what it is because there's no label on it. Um, or something else is going sideways, right? If they, if they can answer that they understand you, that they hear you, and, and you're able to communicate in some ability, then continue, right? If they say no, or they're having difficulty, you're gonna to want to establish a conversation that's clear, concise, concrete, and congruent. S flipping between ideas and ideas, topics to topics, their brain can't handle the change, right? No, it can't, buddy. Um, it can't handle, it's like flip cards. You go into an office meeting and they got the flip cards and they're flipping them around, like, oh, I gotta find that slide, where is it? And you're like, just flip to the page already. Um, communicate one idea at a time. So you're not going to use, did you want tea or coffee? It's like, do you want tea? Yes or no. Do you want coffee? Yes or no. Because as soon as you get, do you want tea or coffee, the brain is kind of like, uh, um, one of those makes a good choice. I don't know which. Maybe I'll ask it again, you know. Uh, make sure that you use short, simple sentences, and you might want to sort of over-exaggerate using an expressive voice. Now, if you're talking... To people, you might want to use gestures, uh, facial expressions that are very congruent and and enhance. <sighs> try to do a series of communication videos when having communication issues. Um, try to use your facial gestures. Try to use uh, gesticulations to enhance what you're saying to emphasize this to emphasize the point. Like for those of us who have been in the mill, the knife hand, right? Use key words. You might want to carry a little whiteboard with you. You know, if there happens to be a whiteboard or, God forbid, if you can actually find a chalkboard. For those of you that don't know what a chalkboard is, please go to Wikipedia. It'll tell you. Um, you might want to use pictures. I've mentioned in another video. You might have like a, cheek, a, a key, key chain or binder ring that has flip cards on it, flash cards on it, right? Little pictures of things, people's faces, places, whatever, right? And then the last one is sometimes you might want to use uh, objects to get your message across. Um, you might need to, and in my case, I have an auditory thing going on that, that sort of exacerbates my aphasia. So you might want to turn the TV off, keep the noise to a minimum, eliminate as much of the distraction as you can. Um, be that turning down the music, be that try not to have a conversation when the jackhammers are going up outside the middle of the day, be that, you know, 
try not to have a conversation with vacuuming, whatever the case may be. Right? I also want to observe the person, right? The person you're having the conversation with, are they just doing you know, this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not listening. You want to make sure that you have that, that reciprocal kind of nonverbal behavior that like they're, they're interested and they're um, involved in the conversation. And then look directly at them. Not like, I want to talk to you about something today. You know, you're not doing that. You want to look directly at them. You know, you want to be kind of squared off. So shoulders square to the body and you're going to look at them directly. You know, if I have to do this a little bit or that a little bit, you know, that's okay. But you're going to want to look directly at the person. And then that'll help communicate a couple of things because they'll be able to see your facial expression. You'll be able to look in their eyes, see if they kind of get that like lost in a way motions going on. Now, getting the message out, again, step one, can they hear you? Do they understand you? Right? Because if they can't get the message out, essentially, they could be completely nonverbal. Now, if they're completely nonverbal, they might know sign language. Because receptive aphasia, right, me getting my message in, is different than expressive aphasia, me getting the messages out. So sign language for someone that already has a problem getting the messages out, well, that, that's just a shit show. Because the sign's going to be all like, did you just order a pizza or you ordered a block war on the West Siders? Like, that's just going to go bad. I don't know sign language. I'm probably going to have to learn it at some point due to some uh, friends that have little ones that have uh, communication or they've been diagnosed in, in the, in the um, spectrum, the autism spectrum somewhere. So some ideas for people that are having difficulty getting, um, you know, the messages in or out, you want to make sure that they have a way to... Um, deal with things like so you're going to ask for getting the message you're going to do like one question at a time you're going to encourage the person to write down the word if they can so if it's a matter of i'm able to understand what comes in but i'm having difficulty getting it out right you might want to have them write it down right um if it's a case of um again the gestures the the over dramatic uh body language the the tone of voice right so sometimes that can help with things but again you don't want to talk to them like a child and you don't want to talk to them like you're a clown. Like if, and I'm not deaf. So talking louder doesn't fix things. So, you know, had that happen once. So those are some of the things you can do. And again, you're going to establish a general topic line. You're going to move from topic to topic. Early on after my stroke, if you tried to change the topic in the middle of the conversation, I'm like, I'm lost. I have no idea what you're talking about. And that is frustrating because all of a sudden you're like, I don't know what they want. <laughs> so... Try to maintain a flow to it. And you have to change top of a conversation. Okay, we need to talk about something else now, so we're going to put that conversation to bed, and we're going to start something new. Again, it, it's it's overly deliberate, and it'll be difficult and stressful, but it may work for some people in some instances. And again, everything I'm saying may or may not work for you, So, because I'm not a speech pathologist. I'm a guy that's had a stroke. The last thing is the verification, right? You want to summarize, pull everything all together, um, I try to keep a little notebook with me uh, because my memory can be faulty now. And yeah, I'm old. I get it. Yeah. But my memory could be faulty and I want to make sure that I'm writing everything down. Right. So I don't forget. And then if, if something comes up, because there could be like a five, 10, 15 minute conversation going on and I'm going to write down what I want to say because it might come up 10 minutes later. Like, oh, uh, 10 minutes ago, we're talking about this and I don't mean to get, yeah, you know, I don't mean to, you know, like, but I got to say this. So, um, Sometimes the use of just yes or no questions, right? Having that conversation with an aphasiatic, um, sometimes just simply yes or no. Give them a this or a that, you know. Did you want the staple remover or did you want the highlighter? See, that's still a, a this or that. I'm giving you an A and a B, right? So try to put everything into an A, B, this, that, yes, no context. You know, did you want lasagna? Not, did you want lasagna or ravioli or chicken cacciatore? Which one did you want? Well, now they're giving them three choices. Yeah. So, I'm screwed. Again, like, would you like lasagna? Would you like that? You know, and eventually you'll piece down it. Um, you might use what's called a bliss board. You might have some kind of, um, uh, like, I'm going to use the word Ouija board or something similar to that. Um, not that I want you to start summoning demons. Because unless you're a level 25 cleric and you've got a, a level... 15 paladin with you summoning demons is definitively a bad life choice like definitively you need that paladin you need that cleric right make sure the pally has recently shone his armor 
And you're all like, I don't get that reference. That's okay. You're not a nerd. So at that point, basically, those are what you can do. Uh, I'll do another one next week about what not to do. So when your words are unwordy, right? Again, break it down to simple steps. Yes, no questions. A lot of gestures. A lot of a lot of structure, time, encouragement, and patience. Don't try to finish my sentences. Don't try to guess my word because there's nothing fr more frustrating than me almost grasping the word in my head and then you say something and I'm like, okay, just, I have no idea what you want now. Um, I've had to tell people, don't do that. But I'm trying to be helpful. No, you're not. Not in the slightest. If you were attempting to be helpful, you just would have shut the fuck up. But, you know. Um, and people, some people are really good. Don't get me wrong. Like some people I've worked with or worked around, They've been excellent. Like, hey, please don't do that because when you do that, it screws my brain up, right? So, because I'm trying to find the word. And when you pick a word, I don't know if that's the right word or not. And I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the word. Even though that was not even close to the word that I meant. So, we'll go through some other techniques uh, next Unwordy Wednesday, which will be next week, which will actually be released on Wednesday. Sorry for the delay. I ended up going to the PTSD group uh, because I graduated PTSD, the PTSD th therapy. Um, and things are getting better. Things are getting better. Uh, for those of you that are wondering where Crash the Wonderbird is, he's currently knee-deep in seagrass, uh, something he likes to chew. Uh, for those of you that don't know, parrots, because he's technically a parrot, will, for his size, might eat like six inches of wood trim a day if we let him. Uh, but we give him destructible things that he can chew, so he's just constantly chewing. He doesn't do anything with it. He just, like, chews it, and that's about it. So on that note... If you have aphasia, if you have anomia, if you have verbal apraxia, just please remember, there's nothing wrong with you. Sure, you have difficulty communicating in one direction or the other. Sure, things get frustrating. Trust me, I know. Just have to be easy on yourself because it is what it is. There's nothing you can do to constructively change it. And the great news is about two to three years after your stroke, it gets better. It, it get, I don't know what better looks like because I'm not there yet, but it gets better. So if you happen to like what you've been watching over the past... Oh, it's actually 19 months or so. Um, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone that's going through the recovery from a stroke, recovery from a brain injury, they have an aphasia, communication-like deficit, or someone who's supporting someone with aphasia or a stroke or a brain injury or a communication deficit, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs and symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who's immediately befuddled and confused, they've lost their sense of balance, Someone has eye problems, like vision issues. They can't see to one eye. They only see in grayscale, though they see a little dot in the world. Someone has facial droop. There's a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. Someone um, who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context, or just doesn't understand language anymore. Um, uh, someone has the inability to stand unaided, general body weakness, or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person into physician comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.